Hello everyone. In today's session, you are going to see how to construct a merely machine for some example. Okay, so here is the example. We are going to construct a merely machine that outputs one for every a b occurring in sequence in input. So whenever the input consists of a b occurring in sequence, we are going to output a one. For example, when your input consists of a b b a b, for this a b one should be there. For this a b one should be there in the output. Okay, so your output should consist of two ones. Okay, so now I'll show you how to construct a merely machine for it. So the first step in construction of merely machine is to construct a DFA. Okay, so how to construct a DFA that recognizes A B? So I'm going to start with this Q naught state. Okay, so whenever the input consists of just A followed by B, we are going to this final state. So this will be the starting state. Whenever your input consists of A exactly followed by B, we are moving to this final state. Okay, so this is one uh, easy way. But when it is a DFA from each and every state on each and every input symbol, we have to check for the possibilities. What will happen if there is a B here? What the for a A here for Q not you on A you have a transition, but on B you don't have a transition. So you have to check each and every possible uh, transitions over here, and also. We are not going to check only just A B occurrence, right? So we have to scan the input till the end, and whenever you have A B, you have to accept it. You have to output the one for it. Okay. So what we do is, uh, the input scan to be scanned from from first to end, and for all this A B occurrence, let us say that we stay in the state Q two. Okay. So when the input is exactly A followed by B, we are reaching Q two. Now we'll start with the state of Q naught. So Q naught is the place where we haven't processed any A B. So in the prefix, you can have any number of Bs. So if your input consists of some Bs in front of it, no problem. We'll stay here. And then when input when the input consists of exactly A and B, we are reaching to the state Q two. Q two is the place where when the sequence of A B occurs, we'll reach Q two. Okay. So this is the first step. And second step will be in Q one. In Q naught, A and B we had a transition. Now we'll see this what happened in Q. Q1 state. Okay, so in Q1 state uh, is a place where we already have uh, processed an A and we are waiting for a B. So what will happen if you have an A here? If you have a A, it is not an issue. If this A is followed by a B, then it is acceptable. So when this A is again followed by a B, we are reaching this Q2 state. And Q2 is the place where it finds whenever A B occurring in sequence, we are reaching this Q2 state. Okay, now these two is done. Now the next step is we'll go to the last state of Q two. Q two when the input is A and Q two when the input is B, we have to find the possibility. So Q two is a place where we have already found an A B. And what will happen if there is one more A? A B is done. If there is one more A, if it is followed by a B, then it we have to stay in this Q two state. Okay, so what we do? If this A is followed by a B, then we can reach this Q two state. Okay, it is like ending in A B criteria. Okay, so if A is followed by B, we are going to reach this Q two state. Q two state is a place where we are going to say that we are going to reach your. Uh, we we are in the place where we have recognized a A B occurring in sequence. Okay, so uh, Q two on A we have done. We have to find the transition of Q two on B. So A B is already done. What will happen if there is a B? Then in the remaining sequence, we have to verify whether there exists an A B. So we have to start from the first checking for this A B. So we'll make a transition to this Q naught state where this A B checking hap uh, happens. Okay. So here I'm going to check for this B. So whenever B occurs, we'll go back to the starting state and find what will happen. A comes and B comes. Okay. So now all possible moves of your DFA construction is done. Now next step is we have to make this as a merely machine. So what is a merely machine? Each and every transition have a output to be attached. Okay. So here what exactly is the criteria is whenever your input consists of A B occurring in sequence as it is, we have to output a one. Okay. So when A is followed by a B, we have to output one. This is the only criteria. So wherever you have this A followed by B. Output to be one. All the remaining cases, we can just consider the output to be zero. For all the remaining transition, we check the output to be considered as zero. Okay. 
So this is how a DFA is designed. Now we'll verify whether it is producing the output as per our expectation. Let us take this input as AB AB. Start from the state Q0. Q0 when the input is A, where does it go? Q0 when the input is A, it outputs 0 and go to the state Q1. Okay, Q1 when the input is B, Q1 when the input is B, it goes to state Q2 and it outputs 1. And Q2 when the input is A, Q2 on A, it goes to Q1 state and what output it produce? It produce 0. Now Q1 on B, Q1 when the input is B, it goes to state Q2 and output it produces 1. Okay, so in your input, you have two occurrence of A, B and in your output, we got two ones as an output. Okay, so this is how the transition actually works for a Muley machine. Okay, so Muley machine is a place where all each and every transition we have a output associated with it. Now, uh, let us see how to construct. This is one type of representation that is transition table, uh, uh, transition diagram representation. For the same, if you want to construct a transition table, uh, transition table is uh, uh, like you have a bit, bit of things to be noted down. Okay, so you have the state Q0, Qn and Q2, three states. Okay, so these are all your present state. And in the next state, you have two possibility. Got it? So when the input is A or when the input is B. Okay, so what will happen when the input is A? When the in Q0, when the input is A, you have a next state to move on and some output is produced. Got it? Q0, when the input is A, it goes to Q1 state and it produces output as 0. Got it? So Q1, when the input is A, it stays in Q1, produce output as 0. Q2, I'm sorry, this is Q2. Q2, when the input is A, it goes to Q1 and produce 0 as the output. And similarly, when the input is B also, we have the same category. So you have a next state and output associated with it. So Q0, when the input is B, Q0 on B, it stays in Q0, produce output as 0. Q1 on B, it goes to Q2, produce 1 as the output. Q2 on B, it goes to Q0, produce 0 as the output. Okay, so this is your transition table representation. And uh, finally, you have one more representation that is your formal way of representing any automata. Okay, that is called your tuple notation. For a, a merely or a more machine, we have six tuples to represent an automata. One is Q, Sigma, Transition Function, Lambda and Q0. Okay, so Q will be your, I will just write it here, then I can come here. Q is finite set of states, sigma is your finite set of input symbols. So in the case your input is made up of AB combination. So this is your input. Okay, and this is a new symbol used to represent output symbols. So here an output is produced in each and every cases, right? So output symbol can be represented like this. And you know what is your del? Del is your normal transition function. And lambda is a new function that is used to represent an output function, output transition function. Okay, so here it is described as from a state on an input, what output it produces. So Q0 when the input is A, Q0 when the input is A, the output it produces 0. Okay, so the transition can be given as Q Q on an input, it produces an output. From a state on an input, it produces an output. Okay, so this is how the transition works. And the last symbol is Q0, the starting state. Okay, so these six are the tuples that are used to represent the Muley machine. So coming to this place, your Q value is set of states Q0, Q1, Q2. Sigma is your input symbol. Your input is made up of A and B. And this is your output symbol. Output is represented as either 0 or 1. Okay. And uh, transition function is your normal transition function. You can write del of Q0 when the input is A, where it goes, Q1. Transition of Q1, Q0 when the input is B, it stays in Q0 and all possibility. 
Q1 on A, it is Q1. Q1 on B, it goes to Q2. Q2 on A, it goes to Q1. Q2 on B, it goes to Q0. This is your normal transition function. And Q0 will be the starting state as it is. Only function that is different is lambda. So lambda of, lambda is your output function. So output of Q0 on A, it produces 0. Output of Q0 on B, it produces 0. Okay, so transition of Q1 on A. Where what it produce? Q1 on A, it produce 0. Output of Q1 on B, it produce 1. Okay, and Q2 on A and Q2 on B, both produce 0, 0. Okay, so this is the final tuple notation. So whenever it is like your NFA or DFA, for whatever the function you take, you have a transition function, tuple notation and transition table representation to be noted on. Okay, thank you.